And I stumbled across this new phrase called chapter types. And that's the phrase that you need to write down, chapter types. So I'm going to use uh, four for this, GPT-4. And I'm going to say, what are the chapter types used to construct a novel? And I'm going to press enter. What are the chapter types used to construct a novel? So I started thinking of these as like Lego bricks. And you'll see the chapter types. OK. So then I ask, because it's missing like some, I always ask, are there any more chapter types for fiction not listed above? Certainly, here we go. Now we have the in media res chapters. Now we have some foreshadowing or prophecy chapters. I can think of some genres that need that. Now I know that this is very, when I first read this and first saw it, I was like, this is, this is really just common sense. Does this feel a little common sense? Like it doesn't seem very earth shattering. Parallel chapters. So that's a cool thing. Now that I know that the AI knows this concept of parallel chapters, I could now denote in my outline, this is a parallel chapter of that one. I could say this is, you know, chapter six is a parallel chapter of chapter seven. And the AI could understand that from the outline and everything. We also have vignette chapters, unreliable narrator chapters, fragmented chapters, empty chapters, less common. Some authors use chapters with no text or just a few words. Um, I can remember, I can think of Faulkner, chapter 13, and as I lay dying, my mother is a fish. Um, so there we go. So we've got some chapter types. Now you could ask it again, are there more? <clears throat> you could keep going until it starts inventing chapters or it starts just like really going off the rails. Like it's a banana chapter. It's a chapter that features bananas. You know, that's a little bit too much. Now here's where it gets really exciting. Somebody give me a genre. Let's do, you know, a tricky, a cozy mystery. Okay. Give me a thorough list for, so give me a thorough list of chapter types I will need to construct an outline for a cozy mystery. Go, go gadget. Here we go. So here's the thing about these kind of chapter types. Now, a lot of us write from instinct, right? So maybe we weren't taught these things in school. Maybe this is not something that you knew. Uh, like a scholarly level, but mm -hmm. it's something that we know instinctively when we write. So now is a really good time to think about the way you like to put together your books, the way that you like to structure them so that you do have any one of these kind of chapter types and identify them in your own work so that when you go forward to the next book, you can better plot out how you want the AI to fill in those gaps. Yes. And I'm finding that I can use this as Lego bricks. So I've tried like mafia romance. I have a, a couple of different genres and I always ask it like, are there even more, even more? And I usually get a list of between 20 to 30 chapter types for that genre. Then I put that as a separate list and I go through it and I take out the chapters I don't want to use. Like I don't want to write kidnapping. I don't want to write, you know, certain things. If I don't want to write those things, I just take those chapters out. Once I have a list of chapters I'm willing to write or willing to review, now I have kind of like a core list of chapters that I can tell the AI, read this list of chapter types. Now construct me an outline for this genre using the above chapter types for this premise and you can repeat chapter types. And that is giving me a much richer outline than any kind of save the cat or romancing the beats or anything like that because it's, it's doing it in a way that it's, it's understanding it at the chapter level. And then from there, you can basically build a template for yourself uh, if you are writing genre fiction. So you see that we have 12, 12 chapter types. I'm gonna ask if there's any more. Are there any more? I always like to ask for any more. And again, I, I can't say that nobody else is not simultaneously coming up with this, but I would say that this is a pretty innovative way to outline with the AI. It's not something I've seen bandied about or shared a whole bunch of times or anything like that. This is what we've all been doing in our caves. And I, I, I really wanna share my cave. <laughs> I wanna share our cave. That's the, the thing. I like the, the local color chapters. 
So that would be something that I would necess- I would do if I was writing a small town cozy mystery, right? Versus something happening in a big city. And as a pantser, if you have a list that you could look at for inspiration, you're not hard set on any of these, but I think it can help you jog to that next, that next uh, point. There's even a culprit's perspective chapters. So now here is where we put it all together. I need a premise for a cozy mystery, something simple, like a one line. Okay, a dog walker summers on a body in the park. Above lists for cozy mystery chapters. Please construct an outline for a cozy mystery novel about that includes a dog walker stumbling on a body in a dog park. Please write specific character names and events in the outline. Uh, so it will be easy to write the story. You can repeat chapter types. All right, so here we go. And what I'm doing in this moment right now is I'm literally using the context window to my advantage. So right now, because I'm in GPT-4, it has the ability to read all the way up to the top. So we also talk, we also call this chain of thought prompting, where you kind of start getting the AI thinking about this. So it started with the novel, and then we got more specific about the, the, um, the uh, it got more specific about the, um, the genre. And now we're getting even more specific about the task at hand. This is a new style of, for, of, of prompting with these larger context windows that are, that are coming available. Um, as for getting the recording, so the members of the academy have access to the recordings. The character is startled by a sudden noise and the chapter abruptly ends. Look at that, how it's bringing in some cliffhangers. I'm so proud of the little AI. It's, it's really trying. We meet Sally, a friendly and observant dog walker. She's shown taking care of several dogs in a small town of Cherrywood. Discovery of the crime. Investigation begins. This is going to work best in GPT-4 because it's a larger context window and it can hold yes. on to more in its memory. Yeah. If you use okay. 3.5, it'll be faster, but it won't, it won't necessarily be as rich in my experience. Harry would after career burnout and loves her simple life in this town. She also starts to build a friendship with Tom, the local baker. Oh, we got a red herring. Pete has a criminal record. So you'll notice it repeated clue finding chapter where we needed to have her find a clue. Are you guys seeing how this is way better of an outline structure? Like this is something I could use to write a cozy mystery than trying to ask it to do it to save the cat. And it naturally kind of does it. The, it already understands the rising action and all of this. <laughs> oh, stick with us. We, we, we game change the prompting all the time. <laughs> That's just what we do. Um, so there we go. We've got 16. And look, it even added in a plot twist that there, the argument had been resolved. And so from this, I start to actually have a backbone of really good material. I could run this through what's like, I call it layering, where I'm asking it to do even more. I could start making edits to it. I could ask it to give me a character list. Um, you can literally ask this to give me a list of all the characters needed to write the above outline and it'll start spitting that out for you. So okay. what good, demo of the academy honestly that's what we're doing this is the future this is what we're building this is what we're doing 